here with Arundhati Basu in Cincinnati. Hi, Arundhati. Hi, Matt. It's a pleasure to be here. Yeah, it's such a pleasure to see you as well. We're just working out. It's been eight years since we, um, since we laid eyes on each other. And um, is that how long since you left Singapore? That's right. Exactly eight years. We came here in October 2012. So it's rolling into eight years. Now, Arundhati, you work for one of the companies that if I had another life, um, I think I would work at, want to work at Procter & Gamble as, as, as well. And what's amazing about you is that you've been with the company for like 22 years now, haven't you? It's coming to 24. 24. Yes. And HR all the way. Um, what, what has been the secret to uh, such, such longevity, which is, which is really impressive. And you've worked through some amazing roles in different parts of the world as well. And I think it's exactly that, what you said, Matt, that it's provided me the opportunity. I don't think I expected to be here this long. I don't think any of us who stayed in the company this long expected it. But I think every assignment and opportunity just kind of made, made it feel like a natural progression. And as long as you keep learning and you enjoy it, uh, I think we kept going. So that's how it's been. And, uh, you know, seven cities, uh, four countries later, we are still here. Yeah, it's interesting what you say. It's that combination, I think, of uh, the next opportunity being put in front of you before you're actually asking for it, but then also at the same time knowing what you want as well. It's a really nice collision of both um, both forces, isn't it? It is. It is. And I think um, PNG does it. I mean, we don't always get it perfect like everyone else, but there is a constant conversation of succession planning and assignment planning, which not only amongst the, us HR people, but in general in the company, because we are so fundamentally believe believing in the build from within philosophy, right? So you have to kind of do that to keep it, retain your talent and grow them to positions that will be your future leaders. Yeah. So just to touch on, um, so you're now vice president um, of HR for Global Feminine Care. Is that right? That's right. So I, yes. So I head HR for our Global Feminine Care business, which is a wonderful category to be in uh, for everything it stands for, um, not just around menstrual hygiene and adult incontinence, but as well as uh, the cause of women, the social campaigns and the cause of women and frankly minorities that we believe in uh, that we are working to um, you know touch and improve lives of every day so yeah now I asked you just before we started you know how you were and you said that you're you're you're, you're feeling good but what 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 has this time uh, been like for you as a as a as a mother and uh, as, a, as, as, as a as a person Yes. Oh, well, uh, these times, I mean, it's amazing to imagine that it's been six months and uh, that we've been living with COVID uh, in the pandemic. And um, well, it has had different uh, periods, like any change. I think initially there was a little bit of disbelief that this was going to happen and that it would continue and would last this long. So the first few weeks, I think everyone in the household was like, enjoy it while you can, which is we are all stuck together. We're going to stay together. And of course, you're worried for, um, you know, yourselves and the family and the community. But it was a little bit of a period of, oh, this is giving us the time we never thought we had. Um, you know, the, you know, the not commuting as much as you did, not traveling as much as you did. Um, but very soon it became a reality that this is going to not go away anytime soon. So we have to not, like, we have to change habits, priorities, the way we work, the way we do things, the way we socialize uh, for an extended period of time. And I think that's when I think every one of us went through some sort of a slump of, um, you know, the denial. Um, but I think I, I am happy to report and I'm actually grateful that my family has been pretty good about it because we've all found our things and our corners uh, to go to when we need that uh, downtime. And, and, you know, PNG as a company has been extremely supportive of our employees and the, and give it a new meaning to flexibility. So I think um, one that has been imposed. So, you know, some flexibility which is imposed is no longer a choice. So it's not really flexibility, but also the choice, to, you know, having the employee choice to decide how and where you work has been amazing. I have to say though, I continue to stay very worried for my extended family back home in India. 
um, it is a very helpless feeling to have aging parents and family members uh, who are so far away and you, even if something would have happened, you would find yourself not able to do anything about it. So that is a terrible feeling. And uh, I think our worst nightmare, I'm hoping that never comes true. Yeah, I think that is one of the hardest things with our loved ones. Uh, where we've had quite global lives and where, you know, we're distributed from our, from our families. And I think that's where uh, obviously the connection virtually um, becomes incredibly important to just appreciate um, those moments, doesn't it? Exactly. And, um, you know, it, it, I'm sure you've seen, I mean, the, the period when everyone did Zoom calls every week with friends who are in your neighborhood to people across the several seas and, you know, uh, distances. So I, I, that has become part of what we described the better normal. Like we never thought to do this more often. And now we kind of somehow feel that we need to and we have. So I think the virtual connection, also everyone is tremendously upskilled. Um, in their ability to use technology and, you know, the digital tools, uh, learning from our, you know, teenagers, but as well as learning ourselves and teaching others. So it has become so essential, which tells you the true, um, you know, the, the tr trigger for adoption is really need. Uh, and until you have that need, people just uh, consider it a nice to have and don't really leverage it. So now there's no going back. I think if build a generation of uh, even like, you know, we, we can no longer just say the millennials or the, you know, the uh, generation X, Y, or Z, whatever. Everyone has had to upskill to some extent that they would never would have done before. So that's a tremendous achievement by itself. I think the pandemic is, that has been one of the few gifts of the pandemic. I couldn't agree more. And just back to your point on connection, it's so interesting how we don't view virtual connection as an excuse now uh, or as a compromise. Um, you know, it, it is it is reality and it's 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 as powerful as a physical connection um, if it if it needs to be that 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 way. I wanted to talk to you, Amdadi, about you know, in your role um, as VP of HR for Global Feminine Care, what has this period meant um, organizationally and from a business unit perspective as to the transformation and the way um, the, uh, the company and the business unit works. Yes, I think it's been a tremendous time for HR. I'm sure my colleagues and professionals uh, in HR across the world would agree there hasn't been a more demanding, difficult, challenging time for us in HR because each day has looked different, has been unpredictable, and everything we believed in the whole notion of uh, you know policy making governance all of that has taken such different shape and all of us and like you know we, those of us who are business facing and business account roles i have realized more than ever before that um, when the external landscape changes no matter how strong your internal organization is it is severely impacted so we have had to think a lot of whether it's employee communications, how we do our strategies, how we prioritize. Um, you know, I, I was referring, uh, referencing flexibility, what it really means, because when flexibility is forced, it's no longer flexibility, it's no longer a choice. And that, that how employees feel. And also, you know, a company like PNG, which believes very, very much in equality and inclusion, we've realized that our, you know, all the sects of employees, who are the most marginalized have had, had it the toughest. So whether it's women, whether it's our minorities, and we've had to really look out for them. And it did help, of course, that US went through this environment of racial you know, um, uh, violence and bias, which came right in the middle of this. And, um, and again, call, huge call to action for all of us in HR to look ourselves in the eye and see, have we created the right culture and environment internally? And um, so, a lot of work, um, a lot of what I would say crisis management work, of course, which, um, you know, I think gets the best of us into our, you know, bias to action mode, but also a lot of reflective thinking, rethinking models we've used before that have worked perfectly. Like, and to give you an example, I mean, PNG is a very egalitarian company, but I think that 
has gone to a new definition and extension because we tend to be very universalistic. So we have principles and then we apply those principles universally to everyone. And this situation and the pandemic has required us to be more particularistic because the same solution does not necessarily seem to work for everyone. Um, and, and we have had to really be open to expansive and creative options and solutions, which as a company we have, you know, we, we've tried to be very open-minded about, but makes all of us uncomfortable because we know what has worked really well. And now we are kind of t testing waters, which we don't know how they will go. Um, what has really helped is our management and our leadership at the top had very early on declared that there are no wrong answers and have asked our employees also to understand that nobody has perfect answers in this world, right? And, uh, and asked for grace very, very humbly and clearly and saying that we won't get everything right, but we'll do our best. So communication. So I think we've become much better communicator. And I just don't mean this in the sense of language, but in the sense of transparency with clarity, frequency. Um, and, uh, and we've learned along the way, Matt, there's been so many learnings uh, along the way um, that we have each day. So it's, it's been a tremendous period of learning and growing as well as HR professionals. So through such transformation and so much learning, how have you um, found resilience being built in just um, you, the team, the organization settling into a pattern during you know, a time where there's still a lot of uncertainty, but are we becoming comfortable with that and how are we sitting with that? I think, uh, you know, I'm very proud of the organization and how resiliency has shown up. Um, I would start with our leaders because um, PNG is a very in, has a very involved leadership uh, and servant leadership culture, which also means the flip side of that is there is a sometimes um, um, a desire to manage everything and control everything and make sure you know that everything is taken care of and there is without needing to a sense of perfection is achieved. And that has really gone out of the window because you know there is no way to control this. So um, one of the first steps in resiliency was to declare and redeclare what we will stop doing and how we will prioritize. Because we found that till employees have that clarity, no matter what you say, they don't see it in in the the words and pictures don't match. So it took a lot for the leaders to step back and really say that you know. Making packing shipping is our first priority at this time because you know we have to continue to serve our consumers. We work in a category and across the company. I'm speaking for our category. You know, women do not stop stop having uh, periods, and we can, must make sure that we are you know get the product to them wherever they are. And so I think that mission really helps in the organization to pull forces together. Um, and and but even within that, we had to make some really clear choices and make sure those choices were short-term choices. Because again, p and being a company which is, um, you know, hundreds of years old, coming close to 100 years old, um, we always tend, tend to be a little long-term in our thinking. And here we were asked to kind of deliver the month, the week, you know, it was, it was becoming so short-term oriented. So it, it really required us to think and make choices again. The second thing I would say is the managers of others. Um, so empathy has taken an altogether new meaning and much deeper meaning. Anything that we thought was empathy, it kind of challenge managers even more. And I don't know if you're familiar with um, the SCARF model by David Rock. Um, uh, growth mindset is a big uh, culture shift in P&G um, that our CEO, David Taylor, has been really um, advocating and trying to bring into our culture. And this pandemic has brought on you know, growth mindset to, um, or, or as a requirement, not just as a culture shift that we would like to have. It is just now you have to have that. And, and so we've used the staff model a lot with managers to help them really assess each individual situation and see where people are and how they are responding to it um, and make it very individualistic. Um, and the other thing it has done is it has given everyone a level playing field because everyone's at home, everyone's working with. I mean, of course, different circumstances at home, but 
nobody has a privilege higher than others when it comes to access to work, access to managers, access to. So it's it's just making sure we recognize that and adjust the way we deal with each other and work with each other. Um, it has given more discipline, I will say, Matt. Like we do fewer meetings, we do shorter meetings, people are more punctual. They are, um, they understand that people have, uh, you know, other needs in the household, whether it's home tutoring or, you know, taking care of somebody at home uh, who, because you could not have sent somebody, your children to daycare or you could not uh, find another caregiver. So um, we uh, had, you know, conference calls with uh, babies on laps to, and everything is acceptable and understood and, and supported which is uh, humanized relationships a lot more at work. Uh, and that's been beautiful. Um, we've also had challenges because, um, you know, it has, not everyone is expressive the same way. So some people would tell us about their challenges, some people would not. And not having that face-to-face -face interaction to be able to understand and truly problem solve uh, when employees don't come forth has been challenging. Um, so we've, also opened up a lot of um, external uh, parties who are accessible to our employees if they don't feel comfortable immediately bring it up to HR even or their managers. So having you know uh, employee assistance programs, uh, consultants and coaches externally available, which PNG typically always has, but really does not encourage a lot because we want to make sure that our managers and immediate um, teams are helping each other the most kind of that's the culture we have but we had to really adapt and adjust and say that not everyone's the same not everyone can talk about the issues they're dealing with at home or at work as easily so i think that's the other uh, big aspect that we had that um, you know we've had to handhold managers and make sure that they understand um, that the needs are very different during these times um, the last thing i will say is um, you know, we've never been a company which has believed in rule making, right? Setting criteria, but still we had some unspoken rules about when people start working, when they finish working. Um, or, um, you know, now that, you know, we started ramping up to uh, return to offices um, while keeping populations down, the, the site population down, but still allowing people by employee choice um, and using the office space as collaboration when you needed some face-to-face -face time. So it's still by choice, but um, there was a time that we kind of inadvertently started almost encouraging people to return to work. And the feedback we got was, that sounds like a microaggression, right? So um, how do you balance the need that PNG traditionally, because we are pretty traditional, we are a modern company, we have already always evolved, but we are traditional in many ways, where we do believe in old fashioned face to face collaboration as the way we really get work done. And virtual somehow still could not replace that, or we were just waiting to ramp up to get back to work. Like we were just waiting for that signal, like when can we get back? And again, you, when, when we heard our employees, we learned that, you know, when we set these goals, like, you know, so-and-so date, we're going to declare when we can come back. And we're waiting for whether it was a state governor or some external or the CDC was going to give us the uh, readiness and all of that. And our employees said that, you know, we, first of all, this ambiguity and uncertainty and the pandemic is a huge stressor. On top of that, it does feel like a microaggression when the company keeps nudging and pushing people to come back. It almost feels like you're not acknowledging that we are working very hard, even in the virtual setup, and that is the new normal. So we've very quickly adjusted to that as well. And uh, really, I'm, I'm happy to see our company um, really declare, while we haven't said indefinitely, like some companies like Facebook and Google, that you know we are they're not coming back for the rest of the fiscal year or whatever we push out that we said, um, you know, January is when we will re-discuss re what return to work looks like until such time it's employee choice. So we just decided to take away the added uh, stressor of, is it next week? Is it next month? When am I going to be asked to ramp up? What am I going to do with things at home? And the biggest testimony of that is our business has been really doing well right which tells us and again six months is not enough evidence i know but we have we feel like our our employees 
have really risen to the task and their delivery of results has not skipped a beat. So it has made us pause and think about what the new normal looks like and what flexibility will look like even when COVID hopefully is gone. Um, so lots to think about and still work on, Matt, but I hope that gives you a sense of how a company like P&G has had to kind of uh, also adapt and adjust. We are not the small tech companies or even the big tech companies who were working from home has been always a big part of their culture. It has not been that in P&G. For us, it's still been an exception. And now it's it's kind of where, how we work for most of our um, you know days. Aradati, they have been beautiful insights and it just reminds me of all the great conversations we've had together in the past. So uh, thanks very much for your transparent sharing and um, it's really good to catch up with you. Oh, thanks, Matt. Good to see you too. Take care.